Okay, so what I'm going to talk to you about today is DevOps over time, which is kind of a ramble about the last some years I have been doing this bit and the sort of stuff that I've been finding with it. Now, most people start these conversations usually with their very first job, but I want to take you back to MS-DOS days and the original Doom. This thing drove me up the wall because you could load levels in, and it was really difficult to type the exact right command when you're like 10 years old. So this was problematic. And so I made my first computer program, and I got it to do it for me. And this drove an idea of laziness-driven development. I've got a powerful computer. Can't I get this to do it for me? Can't I get it to work out what to push from one environment to the next to the next? And it turns out I'm not the only one who thought that. I wasn't particularly unique. We had this lovely graph that came up. It's always DevOps. It's never DevQA ops. Why is that? And we were trying to solve a lot of the problems where people were having to do these things again and again, and people are rubbish. And it just created this ridiculous number of tools. What I noticed was it was all about the ops side. From the beginning, it was like, how do we make operations slightly better? And there are some dev bits in there, there are some build ones, but mostly, now we can do, get, we can do everything. So the first thing I started really caring about in my main career was, how do I get auto recovery? I want to just be plugging my stuff into other stuff. I want to play my toys over here. Production then looks sad. Why can't it work out what it's doing for itself? So then I started getting up on stage, and this was one of my first conference talks. The best thing that we were talking about, why don't we make the computer do everything? This instantly is when I started calling humans crap on stage. Please don't do repetitive tasks. Humans are rubbish. And after that point, we moved through containers. I think I might have given this talk at four different conferences over my time. It's all about how do we do containers? Does at least everyone know what a container is now? Please. Yes. Oh, come talk to me later. So we moved on from it being just DevOps into kind of production engineering. Why can't we automate this entire pipeline? Because rather than just the little bit at the end, that little bit where we just trigger deployments and we just care about those containers, what about the stuff beforehand? Maybe we could create some skeletons. Maybe we could give some best practice ideas for how we get from one thing to another. And this kind of influenced the next couple of years of me constantly building those pipelines. And so we moved into a point where we were automating all the things. We've got SRE comes in from Google and how on earth do we get it so that no matter what's going on, we can automate it? Because as I mentioned previously, humans are crap. Don't let them do repetitive tasks. So we moved from data centers into the cloud. Poor little data center there, it got left behind. Because what we needed to automate all the things was starting to scale this stuff a lot more effectively. And this took a lot of, effect, a lot of effort. And then we moved to Kubernetes. Magic. Everything was solved, right? Everything's always solved by Kubernetes. Instead of 20,000 different systems talking to each other, we've got one very complicated system talking to itself. So that was fine. Everything's fine. Kubernetes fixed it all. And I found myself moving from one company to another, where we'd gone from ops teams, where silos win and everything's all the same, to every developer is equally good at everything all the time. And we know that's always true. So rather than that, we started to look at this idea of enablement, this way of adding in guardrails so that we could say, sure, developers can do anything they like, but here's a nice simple path, this bit's safe, avoid the pit trap over there. And this idea of enablement, some of you might recognize this from Birmingham, meant that I was going into teams more to work with what they'd already built. So the point where you were trying to pull people out of those pits and pushing them into things. So after that point, we started thinking more about, well, we want to automate all the things. What stops us? And a lot of the time, it's this limited time, limited stress. And I cannot um, emphasize enough, the psychological safety of your team is really, really key. So looking more towards the future, what comes next? We've got lots of different names for this. Is it platform engineering? Is it production engineering? DevRelOps is the latest one. Don't worry about your, your developers. Let's just include all the people. Because what we need to do is make sure we're actually looking at every stage of it this time, actually worrying about the developer side as well as the operations. So with that being said, thank you.